All right, it is a beautiful night. I know I'm a little late on this, but hey, when you gotta watch other sports, you know, you know, it is what it is. So yeah, week two of the college football season was a little weird. It was a little weird. You know, we had some interesting games. We had some games that didn't make any sense. Uh, let's start with the big one in Texas, Michigan. We're talking Davis Warren looked out of sorts. We're talking the Michigan defense looked out of sorts. We're talking the Texas offense and defense moving like a well-oiled machine. Texas beat the brakes off of Michigan. Just It was absolute domination from beginning to end. Penn State struggled. Alabama struggled. Arizona struggled. It, it was kind of rough. Kind of rough to watch, especially Arizona late at night. Like, you're struggling against Northern Arizona. Come on now. Jalen Milrow and company continued to squander things away, but luckily USF couldn't do anything against the Alabama defense. And Penn State, I just don't understand. Drew Aller is playing pretty good football, and yet the defense did not play like they did against West Virginia. I genuinely do not understand it. But the funniest results of the weekend was definitely Notre Dame losing to Northern Illinois. We're talking probably the funniest thing I think I've ever seen where in which, you know, there was some key plays that the Northern Illinois defense made. I mean, we're talking the Irish had less than 300 yards total, you know. It was it was it was rough. It was rough watching the tail end of this game because I was watching the um, the Cyhawk game in which you know Iowa's defense for that first like the first thirty minutes plus was just a bullying Iowa State. And I mean the second half, Rocco Beck and company finally got it together. They finally got it together, and I mean that 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 is so cool. Um, yeah, it, it is. It is crazy. It is crazy. You know, a lot of people were saying, hey, Notre Dame might go, you know, unbeaten the rest of the way, you know, after beating Texas A&M. They might go unfeated, get that five seed, and, you know, now this loss. And Riley Leonard is hurt yet again, too. I mean, I mean, he hurt something. He hurt something. And I'm reading I read somewhere the other a few minutes ago that he hurt another part of his body yet again. Yeah. Yeah, Thomas Hammock, he's very proud. He's definitely going to get something. He's going to get some sort of – going to get something. I, I can tell you that much for that win. And that win propelled Northern Illinois to the top 25 along with some other teams, but we'll talk about those other teams in a minute. And then Oklahoma in one of the weirdest games I think I've ever seen. You know, they were in the dogfight with Houston of all teams. Now, Houston just got smacked around by UNLV, who's undefeated right now. And Oklahoma played terribly. Jackson Arnold and company played terribly. This is not the result you wanted here. You know, they they played Temple. They beat the brakes off of Temple. But this game against Houston, this is inexplicable. This is, This was bad. It's really, really bad. I, I don't understand it. Like, and then Ashton Janty again had another amazing night for Boise State, but Oregon, you know, was able to get the win in the end with some key plays by Tez Johnson and the special teams unit. It, it, I mean, the special team unit got to be the MVP. For the Oregon Boise State game, if you watch Big Ten after dark, and it still feels weird saying Big Ten after dark, but it is what it is. Um, teams like Tennessee, Nebraska, Utah, they all dominated. Yeah, Kim Rising got hurt in the Utah game, and yeah, Baylor scored, you know, some points. But I mean, at at one point, Baylor's quarterback had five yards passing. It was that bad. That Utah defense is something serious, something serious. And Arkansas, Oklahoma State probably played one of the best games of the day, uh, to be quite honest with you. It's definitely an interesting 
week two. I'll, I'll say that much. And now we move on into week number three. And week number three of college football is going to be a little bit weirder. You know, the matchups on paper are kind of like there. This is one of those weeks where the matchups on paper don't look the most interesting. But they are very, very interesting. We have two top 25 matchups. We have two top 25 matchups. One of them will be Friday night in the debut of Fox's new package of games, basically, from college football to UFL, college basketball, whatever else, to replace Friday Night SmackDown. And it's gonna be it's gonna be something because this game again features an Arizona team that you know kind of struggled a little bit. Noah Fafita and company just kind of looked kind of off. And DJ Gibbons and the Kansas State Wildcats are coming in, ready to roll. Um, Saturday's, you know, big time offering. So if you need like something to pair with that Arizona State Kansas, I mean that Arizona Kansas State game, I'd say watch a WNBA game with that. Or if you just want to watch it by itself, I mean, you can do that too. I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be doing the first option that I said some other sport on Friday, like MLB or something like that. But yeah, definitely pair that game up because this that Big 12 matchup should be very interesting. The Big 12 is looking very, very intriguing in the early portion of the season with all these matchups occurring. And I believe this is also a non-conference matchup, just like the Baylor-Utah game was. Technically a non-conference matchup, so it doesn't count in the standings. But Saturday, again, teams like Oklahoma State, Michigan, uh, Miami, you could say Oklahoma, but uh, I'm going to leave that. Utah, Texas, Nebraska, Tennessee, you know, they're all, again, it's a little bit lighter of a slate for the top 25, too. There's still some interesting games involving non-top 25 teams, too, but at the same time, you know, how will Jalen Milrow and company rebound against the Wisconsin team that was struggling with South Dakota? LSU, they don't want to have two losses. An unbeaten South Carolina is waiting for them. Again, the other ranked matchup is a number 24 Boston College team led by Thomas Castellanos taking on number six Missouri. Missouri has somehow shot up all the way to number six in the nation. But Brady Cook is still at quarterback. You have Theo Weiss at wide receiver as well. And, I mean, again, there, there's some other guys as well. You know, good old Luther Burden. You know, the, just the old reliable. And Missouri is, you know, looking like a team that you know, could make some noise this year in, in college football. They could make some noise. But. We will find out in this matchup, which is going to be a weird time. It's going to be at 11.45 a.m. Central Time on the SEC Network. And this should have been the game, that game they went to, but instead they're going to Columbia for LSU, South Carolina. They're going to the other Columbia. They're going to Columbia, South Carolina instead of Columbia, Missouri. So it's it's fine. It's fine. It's whatever. Yeah, that should be an interesting QB matchup. Again, Boston College is one of those teams that, you know, can make 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 some noise. They can make some noise on a good day like they did against Florida State. And speaking of Florida State, they're taking on Memphis. That's another game that you may want to, you know, tackle and, you know, look forward to. The Civil War between Oregon and Oregon State is renewed. That game will also be on Fox again. TV contracts have been kind of dictating things, so an Oregon State game goes to Fox instead of the CW. Um, my other two big questions here to end off our discussion this week, Oklahoma, Notre Dame, can they avoid pitfalls? Tulane is a team that has played tough the first couple weeks of the season. And, you know, that they, they played Kansas State tough until the very end. Can the same thing happen to Oklahoma again? Because remember the last time Oklahoma played Tulane, it was rough. It was rough for the Sooners, and they had to really pull all their cards out of the hat to win that game at the very end. And for Notre Dame, they're playing one of their oldest rivals in Purdue, and 
with the status of Riley Leonard up in the air a little bit and with the status of this Notre Dame offense, you know, kind of just, eh, the defense, eh, you know, there's a lot on the line here. You don't want two losses now. You really don't want two losses early in the season like this. Again, you know, when, you know, back in the old days, I guess we could call them now, back in the old days, one loss, you were definitely in trouble. But now in this 12-team era, two losses and you are, you are, you're, this is the new, you are in trouble. This is the new, you are in trouble. So Notre Dame cannot afford to lose this game against Purdue. And Hudson Card should be waiting for him, if I'm not mistaken. For other teams like Ole Miss, who's taking on Wake Forest of all teams on the CW, and Georgia taking on a Kentucky team that had um, Vandegrift last week, you know, go three for 10 for like 30 yards. And, uh, I mean, it was it was rough. Again, South Carolina beat the brakes off of Kentucky last week. And, you know, they, they look very impressive. So, again, that's a big thing to wonder about. Will that defense shine against LSU yet again and Garrett Nussmeyer? But Carson Beck and company should have no problems with this Kentucky team. I don't – I genuinely just don't see it. Again, a lot of times when they prop up this Kentucky, when they prop up this Kentucky Georgia matchup, it ends up being a complete nothing burger. And that's the same case with this one. You know, again, Kentucky got smacked around by South Carolina. So I'm expecting it even worse, you know, with the new players that Georgia has and, and the way they've been cycling through wide receivers and running backs and tight ends and, and just a dominant offensive line, a defense that looked absolutely amazing against Clemson. You know, like, of course, they played Tennessee Tech th- this past week, but this is a Georgia team that, you know, it could be in the cards that they get upset, but, I mean, to be completely honest with you, you know, that's like a 2% chance at best at happening. So, at the end of the day, we're going to have an interesting week of college football. Do not be surprised that there's one or two upsets in here. That make no sense at all. Just don't be surprised at that. But from me to you, we'll talk the NFL tomorrow. We'll talk some volleyball on Saturday. We'll talk some volleyball on Saturday night, late Saturday night, after the conclusion of some college football games because there are no more right games after 10 o'clock Central. So we'll talk at about 10 o'clock Central with those, you know, you know with, the, with the stuff about college volleyball and everything like that. So for me to you again, I'm going to get on about it here and enjoy the rest of my evening because a volleyball matchup took years off my life with how intense it was. But yeah, what are, y'all, what are y'all's thoughts on week number three? What, what do you have? Do you have anything to add? Again, there's, there's a bunch of SEC teams playing this week that are in the top seven, you know, Tennessee playing is number seven, Missouri again, number six. Alabama at number four, Ole Miss at five, Texas at two, Georgia at one. I mean, it's just a crazy amount of SEC teams in the top five. And, of course, Ohio State, number three. But, um, yeah, we have quite a log jam at the top. And for now, things are not going to get sorted out. But they will be sorted out very, very soon. And, we have, and again, these matchups this week, while on paper they don't look great, There's going to be something in here that makes no sense. So my money, if I were a betting man on how crazy some of these matchups we get, I'm betting Notre Dame, you know, is going to have a crazy game. And I'm betting an SEC team, you know, that's playing a tougher opponent will stumble. So that's what I'm thinking. Those Those are my two definite predictions this week. So I'll say that. Take care, everybody, and good night.